Hi, my name is Maxime and I will present my work as PhD student. It concerns the modeling of forest growth, but first a little introduction about the context. Since the 60s, the rate of carbon emissions have grown from 4.5 to 11 in the 2010s gigaton of carbon per year. Because of the ocean and continental sinks absorbed about the half of the total emissions, the CO2 concentration in atmosphere climbed from only to say so 1.8 in the 60s to 4.5 in the 2010s gigaton of carbon per year. The terrestrial carbon sink as vegetation stocks more carbon from the atmosphere than the ocean sink. This makes the forest a valuable asset to fight the rise of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and thus mitigate the global changes. The forests in the world are being reduced for many years now, going from 30.5% of land area covered in 1919 to 31.1% in 2020s mainly due to land use change and particularly deforestation in Africa and South America. However, some regions have seen the forested areas grow as Asia and Europe. In French metropolitan territories, forest covered area increased by about 70% over a century, going from 9.1 in 2008 to 16.1 mega hectare in 2019. From an economical point of view, this sector represents about 25 giga euros and employs 378,000 full-time equivalents, uh, from planting to sell through exploitation, exportation, transformation, etc. This represents about 1.1% of French GDP and about 1.1% four percent of French active population. All in all, the forests are the siege of high stakes. Some concerns their ecological role as a lever to mitigate the global changes by increasing the carbon flux from atmospheric to land carbon reservoir, or economical role as a sector employing a large workforce and exploiting a renewable resource. The other concerns the future of forests given the global changes and their local consequences. Those are both climatic, increased frequencies of extreme events, modification of normal conditions as precipitation, mean and extreme temperature, and economic loss of value of forested area by change of species exploitable and or loss of productivity. Now to my work. I work on a model named Castanea. First I will give an overview of the model and then explain which part I work on. Castanea is a process-based flux model. It means that this model is designed to estimate fluxes on the basis of the physiological, chemical and physical process occurring in the natural systems. It is based on several hypotheses, such as an homogeneity of the forest stand in terms of age, leaf spatial distribution, and the monospecificity of the stand trees. This model has flaws when it comes to exotic, to say so, densities of trees. As for now, the model underestimates the above ground root production when dealing with high densities and overestimates it when dealing with low densities. However, the most representative density gives correct estimation, as shown on this figure. On the horizontal axis, we are going from free growth density, which is relative density index equals zero, to self-thinning density, which is relative density index equals one. The dashed boxes represent the value estimated by the model, and the solid boxes the value measured. The question is, what could be the proxies for such deviation? My work is based on two main sources of misestimation concerning effect of density. First, LAI. 
This parameter, partly describing the canopy of a forest stand, represents the area of leaves reported on the land area, as the leaves are the main interface between tree and environment. The modification of this area will affect the water and carbon fluxes between stand and atmosphere, and thus impact its productivity. Second, sapwood area. The sapwood is the living part of the trunk, and thus represents a large breathing biomass. This biomass is active all year long, and its misestimation might affect the quantity of carbon loss through respiration and thus the productivity of the forest stand. To explore the LAA reaction to the change of stand density, we used data from literature and measured LAA on the forest stands in the northern part of French metropolitan territory. These sites present variability in pedoclimatic conditions, stand age and stand densities. You can see on this figure the geographical position of all the stands considered for this work on the LAI. As a star point, we plotted the estimation of the existing model on the LAI estimation of a forest stand given its age and basal area. We use the existing model and you can see on this figure on the horizontal axis the measured LAI and on vertical axis, the estimated LAI. The colors stands for the origin of data and the shape of points represents the method of acquisition of LAI values. Given the data used by the model to estimate LAI, it seems impossible to express the interannual variability of this value. And now the same figure, but from our new model. The exploration of data allows us to make better estimation of LAI, even though the annual variability is still inaccessible given the entry data. However, we used cross-validation to estimate our model. The use of the new data will be interesting to validate the increased performance of LAI estimation. And the relative density index, as measure of density doesn't seem to have any effect on the LAI, which cancels our LAI hypothesis. The model is still better for LAI estimation and might increase the performance of the Castaner model. About the sapwood area hypothesis, the work is still to be done. However, preliminary work shows that in the Castaner model, the sapwood respiration largely impacts the carbon budget of the forest stand. Plus, the RDI of the stand has implied large variability. Here, the respiration doubled between a stand with RDI 0.25 to a RDI 1. This figure shows the respiration maintenance on the same site with three different densities. The red shows the leaves, the green shows the sapwood, and the blue shows the wood. The question to explore here is whether this switch of respiration between low and high densities matches reality, and if so, is the scale of this variation is correct. Given the measurement of total stand sapwood area against the RDI of forest stand, there seems to be an effect of density on sapwood area. This reinforces the sapwood hypothesis, even though the productivity must also match. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your interest in my work. You can find here the sources of this presentation.